Hello, uh, I'm Lucas Feldsman, and we are at the Thomas Welton Stanford Art Gallery on the campus of the Stanford University. And this show is opening today. I'm very happy to be here and have all the work up. The show is called Ghost Pile. And maybe I start by talking a little bit about the place that is pictured in these images. It is work that is all uh, about the Sacramento Valley. So this is the northern part of the great central valley in California. It is north of the delta. And it is really even within the Sacramento Valley, a small section of that kind of the central depressions in the valley where there's some marshes that have been now drained and are heavily used for agricultural things. So the work really looks at this particular place. I think of it as being very much about place, describing this place very accurately. But just as importantly, I think of the place as a model. It is about a marsh that has been altered by agricultural and how we as people function within that, how we uh, still connect to nature, how we find ourselves within that is a theme that uh, runs through my work and that also comes out in this work. The name Ghost Pile comes from a sign that I photographed, which I uh, found really a great name because I think it reflects on the process of photography. I think of images as piles, in a way a pile is something that has accumulated, so it's this layering of information that the camera records and of course it is all ghosts that we record. The things are not actually there but it's their imprint on the lens, their imprint in reality that then is recorded on film. So the idea of ghost pile became the name, the greater name for this whole uh, body of work which I think of as an archive. So it's really called Ghost Pile Archive of a Marsh. And out of this work, different things, different works are being created. One of them, which is a very important part of it, is a book that is called Waters in Between. It has text by Angelus Silesius and John Berger. And uh, it is one version of what could be drawn out of this archive. Ghost Pile, this exhibit, is another version, is a version for this particular place. So each pl in each place, it will take on a slightly different form or shape. I think of it as a song that's created out of this archive. The archive contains over a thousand negatives, black and white and color and sound recordings. Here we have, kind of over there, we have a display of the archive in a way. We have small images, they're all mounted on um, steel plates. They are five by seven contact prints. And we have these almost grid-like configurations. The first one is called on the ground. So there's remnants of things that I found, things that we push out, things that we don't want anymore. And then the second one is called house. The house is something that we surround ourselves with. with, with. So it's, it's kind of how we enclose ourselves. But then at the same time, we also see uh, abandoned houses. We see uh, the people have moved on. For example, in this particular place, we, it used to be formed by small family farms. Now big corporations have come in and have bought, up, bought out a lot of the farms. So the land is still being used, but a lot of the old farmhouses now have no value anymore for them. So they're kind of just sitting there and falling apart. So the second grid is called house, surround. And then we have a third one that's called currents transform, which is more about the movement, the movement of water in particular, but also the movement of light, the movement of energy, and is a more metaphorical part of the archive. Water is a really important theme in this work because water is what has formed the Sacramento Valley, especially the Sacramento River, the Feather River, and the Yuba River. And of course, it still floods because it is a floodplain, but now the floods are called disasters because houses are built in the floodplain. So one thing that this work also a little bit looks at is this idea of how nature changes in terms of our usage and uh, what, what's happening on it. 
So it's not about the specificness of, of the people who do this, but it's about how humans relate to the environment and hopefully about how we internalize nature and how we find our ways in that. And that's a theme that goes through all my work. Hi, welcome to Icon Gallery. My name is Shona Dutta, and I'm the director here at the gallery. Uh, this is one of three branches of ICON, and primarily we show South Asian artwork, so that means artwork from India and Pakistan. We highlight contemporary and modern work, and that means that all of the work comes from the 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond. So the show that we're highlighting at this moment in time is called The Human Dichotomy, and this show is interesting, especially for our gallery, because it is a show of Pakistani miniature artwork. Traditionally, in Pakistan, the art of miniature painting has been extremely representational, very much about representing royalty and the, the subjects just beneath royalty. And a lot of the time, artists in Pakistan would use that as a vehicle for describing their politics and the way that they see the world. And they would have to do it in a very understated way simply because these artworks were a lot of the time commissioned by royalty. So going through the show, we could talk about each artist. Tazim Qayyum represents a lot of her own politics and the politics of Pakistan in her, her images of cockroaches repeated over and over again. And I know that for a lot of people, that may seem a squeamish subject and something not very beautiful, but going back to the idea of traditional Pakistani miniatures, she abstracts the cockroach in such a way that she applies floral motifs, which are very traditional, and then starts taking the cockroach apart, as in entomology. She pins and labels them, and basically the cockroach serves as a dehumanized form of a living being. Moving on, you can see the work of Atiya Shokat. She uses a very personal approach where Tazines would have been quite uh, political and open-ended. The artist actually went through a horrific fall and was paralyzed from the waist down. In her work, you can see that she represents many um, images of the spine of a particular vertebra which was affected. So for her, the dichotomy is between the present and the future, um, the organic and the mechanical in the in the, the medical instruments that she represents in her work. So the third artist in the show is Aisha Hussein, and her work is on the surface extremely political. She shows a lot of images of Benazir Bhutto, who was the first female prime minister in Pakistan and also assassinated one year ago. Aisha's work is obviously hugely political, but when you look very closely, and you do have to look extremely closely to find it, the textures in her work are all made of practically microscopic text drawn with a single hair brush. So in her work, you see a dichotomy between the, the, the book, which she uses a lot, and the illegible, the unreadable. Her text is not meant to be read. It's meant to be a texture and fall back to the background. The last artist in the show is Rehana Manji, and she is also quite young and uses a very new medium, which is human hair on, on canvas or on Wesley. And what she told me is that she herself went through a huge emotional trauma and as a result started getting pretty severe headaches, and as a result of that, her hair started falling out. Obviously, her medium is extremely personal, it's extremely human, it's as organic as one can get, and yet she applies the, the medium in a very sort of direct and graphical way, almost inhuman, and very sort of regimented and mechanical. So for her, it's her way of organizing her emotions and making sense of something that happened to her in the past. 
So when we talk about Pakistani miniature painting, a lot of people are misled by the word miniature, and rightfully so. Obviously, you think of something physically small. In essence, Pakistani miniatures are um, really a form of working small instead of creating a small canvas or a small work. So what it means is using an extremely small brush and creating very fine detail. And when it comes to uh, miniatures, this school, which all of these artists graduated from, the National College of Arts in Lahore, is the only school in the world that has a major of miniature painting, which is very interesting because it's sort of a, a real revival of the art form. It was extremely traditional. It had a, a, a definite sort of rise and fall, and for the past I would say 300 years it has been forgotten and just recently in the last decade or two has it been revived and have these sorts of artists had a chance to to show what they what they want to represent in the form that they think is most relevant.